All right, my friends, so Tracy writes in asking about a level income annuity. His cash balance pension plan has been frozen. Sounds like, uh, is that going to PBGC? I'm not sure. Uh, but he's asking, hey, should I just roll over that amount in a, uh, you like my Hartford Whalers tank top, by the way? Look at that, pretty cool, huh? Hartford Whalers. That's from, um, I can't remember what store I got this from, some, uh, some company. The Hockey Guy on YouTube advertises it. I forgot the name of the company. I bought it through his link, so hopefully he got paid. I got a Hartford Whalers one, and I have a Boston Bruins one, but again, I don't really follow hockey anymore uh, just because they can all kiss my butt. All right, just kiss my butt hockey. Uh, yeah, yeah. All professional sports, Big Ten, Pac-10, all KMB. You guys are clowns across the board. All right, so back to Tracy's question about a level income and duty. I'm just not that big of a fan, Tracy. And the reason, frankly, is simple. Uh, is because you could probably uh, get more out of that, uh, that money you roll into a level income annuity uh, just by simply rolling into like a Ginny Mae fund or something like that. And you certainly have a whole lot more access to it as well, if that makes sense. So on a level income annuity, with the way rates are now, it takes about 20 years to break even now. And that's depending on what the payout ratio is. I've done tons of videos before on uh, payout ratios on annuities. And uh, I, uh, if it's less than 6%, I'm just not that big of a fan. I'm just not. So if it takes, you know, say 20 years, well, probably 19 years to get your money back, and that money's been locked up other than the monthly amount they pay you over those 19 years, uh-oh. Achoo! Excuse me. Achoo! Excuse me. Coronavirus. Um, stay away. If they uh, if they take that money, you know, let's just say give you a hundred bucks a month. Well, you don't have access to the rest of that money other than the hundred bucks a month. Well, if something comes down the pike where you need more than hundred bucks a month, that's what I'm saying. I just don't see the benefit there at all. Now every situation is different, but even if I just put it in a non-interest bearing checking account. Like I said, it's going to take 18, 19, 20 years before, before that account is exhausted and have access to it the whole time. I'm just not a big fan. So in that case, what I'd probably do is I'd probably take half of it, put it in a Ginny Mae and maybe the other half, like the Wellington or something like that, uh, recognizing I'm not going to touch the other half for 10 years. And you should be able to have more uh, from the Wellington Fund or the Wellesley Income Fund uh, than you would if you just kept it all in cash or did the level income annuity. Now, some people say, but Josh, the level income annuity will give you some money before you're 59 and a half without the penalty because it's a pre 59 and a half distribution. And as such, if it were not an annuity, it'd be subject to the 10% penalty. Not necessarily. I didn't catch how old Tracy was, but Tracy's 55 or older and the company uh, freezes up his cash balance pension plan and allows him to have distributions from it. He just can't contribute. Uh, he has access to it because he's after the age of 50, uh, 54 and the money is still at the employer plan. He has access to it penalty free. Still has to pay tax, but it's penalty free. So that's, that's not a concern in this case. Now, if he's before the age of 55, yeah, he'd have to consider, you know, think about that. But at the end of the day, I'm just not a big fan of annuities and right in this environment. And I like annuities. I just, you know, income annuities, I just don't see a huge benefit of them at all right now. All right, hope this helps.